What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here and this is the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G and in this video we're going to be going over 7 reasons to avoid buying this device. Now overall I do think this is a very good phone. It's an excellent value and you're really getting a lot here for the money. I like that we're getting a lot of storage, we're getting a powerful processor, and in general I do think this is a good option. However, I wanted to create a list of various things that I think you'll definitely want to be aware of prior to getting this phone so that there aren't any potential disappointments or surprises with this device for you. Now most of the features this phone does lack are things that I wouldn't expect it to have considering that it is an affordable option. However, again, I don't want you to expect that it's having this feature or that feature when it doesn't end up having those features. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to address here with this device is that it does feature a completely plastic build. Now the display is glass, which does make sense, but everything else is plastic. So I do recommend pairing up the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G with some sort of case, just so that the phone doesn't get really scratched up as time goes on, and it does continue to look fresh and new. Thankfully though, despite being made out of plastic, I do feel like they did make the best of the materials that we're getting here, and I understand that for a budget phone, you shouldn't expect to get the most premium materials. I do like also that the phone does feature a matte finish, as it tends not to pick up as many fingerprints. Now coming in at number two, that is that there is no 4K video recording with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G. Now overall, I don't typically expect to see 4K video recording with phones in this segment, however, there have been a few that do offer it. So if you do have one of those devices and you're expecting that any new Android phone in 2022 or 2023 does have 4K video recording, then just know that you're not getting that here with this phone. Now I do understand that the display that we're getting here with this device is only 720p, so technically if you did record videos at 4K or even 1080p, which is the maximum resolution supported here, you can't actually view that content in that full resolution on the display panel itself on the device. However, nowadays, many people do have 4K TVs and they do wanna watch their content in the full quality that their TV is capable of showing it at. So if you are one of those people with a 4K TV, you might wanna consider spending a bit more and getting a phone that supports 4K video recording so you are able to actually utilize that resolution that your TV is capable of showing video at. Now coming in at number three is the general design of this device. Now certainly, with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G, they have practicality in mind here. They were definitely not trying to make this phone overly interesting or different from anything else we've seen in the past or present. I know most people don't really care about having a phone that looks really cool or is really unique or different. They just want a phone that is a reliable working device so they can make calls, check emails, go on social media, and do all those various things. So if you are one of those people, I'm sure this isn't really a big deal for you, but on the other hand, this general design of having a thicker bottom bezel, any water drop notch, has been replicated by many companies, and overall this design has been out for a long time. Now if this phone had launched in 2018, for example, it would have fit right in with different phones that reach the market at that time, so there hasn't really been a ton of innovation overall when it comes to the designs of lower end Android smartphones. The good news though is that this design does work pretty well for most people and having this large display certainly has quite a few benefits. If you're watching video content, you're getting a much more immersive experience. If you're browsing the web, it's a lot easier to see what's on the display compared to a phone with a smaller screen. So overall, I am happy with the design that we're getting, but it's also nothing overly interesting. Now coming in at number four is the processor that we are getting here with the phone. So this device does feature the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor, and there is also six gigabytes of RAM. So overall, that's not too bad, but definitely don't expect this phone to be nearly as fast as a phone that might cost more around $1,000. You're certainly getting what you're paying for here with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G, so definitely keep your expectations in line. Now thankfully, with the 5G connectivity that this phone offers, you are able to utilize T-Mobile's latest and greatest networking technology. So that certainly is a good thing. And I do appreciate that nowadays, you are able to get a 5G device without having to spend a lot. Now, as far as the processor performance goes, in general, I feel like it does suit the needs of most people out there. You'll have no problem going online, going on social media, sending text messages, you won't really be faced with too many slowdowns there. However, I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 5, and I got a single core score of 539 and a multi-core score of 1599. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of how the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G compares to your current device. Because who knows, 
this phone could be a performance downgrade compared to what you currently have. Now coming in at number five is that there is no HDMI out via the USB-C port. Now this is another feature that you typically don't find with lower end Android smartphones, but if your current phone does have HDMI out, and you're expecting that every Android phone has that, then just know that you're not getting that here with this device. And that certainly is a helpful feature. I know nowadays people have smart TVs, they have Chromecast, they have different devices like that, so you can watch content on your TV, whether it's wirelessly through mirroring or just streaming in general, but there are still situations where HDMI out does have its benefits. For example, if you are in an area with a public network where you can't really use a local network connection to stream content, such as how you do with a Chromecast, in maybe a residential environment, then it is nice to be able to plug in directly. Also at a hotel, I'm never able to get a Chromecast to work for me uh, when at a hotel, so having the ability to just do an HDMI connection to the TV certainly can be very convenient. So it's one of those things that you might not use all the time, but when you do want to use it, it does really come in handy. So I do wish we did have HDMI out. Coming in at number six is that there is no stereo speakers with this device. Now thankfully, the main speaker on the bottom of the phone does work pretty well. It does get decently loud and clear. So in general, if you just wanna sit back, relax, watch a video, or listen to some music here on the phone, the speaker will get the job done. However, on more premium devices, you tend to get stereo speakers. So the way that works is that you get audio out of the main speaker, but then also the earpiece functions as a main device speaker as well. So for this phone, the earpiece only works for phone calls, but again, on other phones, you'd be getting audio out of the earpiece as well for everything else. So if you're watching a video in landscape, for example, it is nice getting a more immersive audio listening experience. So I do wish we had that here, but again, thankfully the main speaker is pretty good. And in my full review video, I do give you a test of the actual speaker quality with this device, but I would have liked to see stereo speakers. That definitely would have been something that would have really made this phone stand out amongst the competition. And finally, for number seven, this really is something that I really don't like about this phone and could potentially be a major deal breaker for you, which is why I saved it for the last thing here. That is that there is no front facing portrait mode with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G. Now this genuinely surprised me. I understand that originally when portrait mode was launched, that was a more premium feature that you'd find with higher end phones, but I've used phones now in pretty much any price segment and they have front facing portrait mode. I've even used devices that are $50 <laughs> and uh, those phones even have front-facing portrait mode. And sure, it might not work that great compared to more expensive phones, but at least the feature is still present, and we don't have that here. Now, we do have portrait mode for the rear camera, which they refer to as live focus. And you can see we even have a slider here to adjust the blur. However, if you then go to the front-facing camera, as I am right now, Here's how things look with the selfie camera, which is pretty good as it is, but if I want to go to live focus, it then flips around to the rear camera. So there is no front-facing portrait mode with this phone. And the phone has also gotten a series of updates since I got it. In fact, I've had this phone for several months now, and they have not added in portrait mode. So I'd imagine they have no intention of ever doing that. And if you are someone that does like to use portrait mode quite a bit, then I can certainly see that being a reason not to get this device. And another reason not to get this device based on that in itself is that pretty much every competitor to this phone does have front-facing portrait mode. So it's not like, you know, some of these other things that I'd mentioned where you'd have to spend more to get those features. You can literally buy a phone the same price or cheaper than this one and still have front-facing portrait mode. So certainly that's something that I'm surprised we don't have here and it is a bit of a disappointment. Now, whether or not it's a deal breaker really depends on what's important to you. That's a feature you use all the time then I can see why you you know, would not wanna get this phone. But if you literally don't care about portrait mode at all, then I suppose not having it really isn't relevant to you. But this concludes my video on seven reasons to avoid buying the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G. Now again, overall, I think this is a good device. It's an excellent value, and I know they're offering it at the carriers with very solid deals and promotions but those are the worst things about the phone, <laughs> the shortcomings of it, and if any of those things on this list are things that are important to you, then hopefully this video is helpful and you learned what you're not getting here with this phone. Of course, with a device like this being in an affordable segment, you shouldn't expect to get every feature. There's a reason why people will pay $1,000 for a smartphone or even $500 or $600, but not everybody knows the trade-offs that you're getting in exchange for those savings. So I hope you enjoyed the video, but this is the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G, and I will see you in the next one.